the July edition of the USGNN Newscast, sponsored by U.S. Glass Magazine. I'm Penny Stacy, editor of U.S. Glass. And I'm Erica Turney, assistant editor. Today we're bringing you the live demo from the recent full-scale commercial building hurricane test at the Insurance Institute for Business and Home Safety's Research Center. We also have exclusive interviews with two senior IBHS officials. U.S. Glass Magazine recently toured the facility and attended a lab demonstration, which was held in the 21,000 square foot testing center, which also houses 105 fans capable of producing up to 130 mile per hour winds. The demo showcased the benefits of using safety features on commercial storefronts and roll-up doors. Take a look as Tim Reinhold breaks down the test. Well, the first thing we're going to do is the buildings are facing with the roll-up doors into the wind and we're going to simulate a thunderstorm coming in with the wind getting up to hopefully about 95 miles an hour. It's not an uncommon thing to find after a major storm that you've got overhead doors that are buckled in. On the blue building, we've got the door with the wind locks on there and so it should stay in place nicely and keep the inside of the building in, in pretty good shape. Then we're going to roll, rotate the building around on our turntable so that the glass door front is facing into the wind. And it's just, the store front on both buildings is identical. As we bring the wind up, we may well pop out the glass windows, the fixed lights, or if we don't, then we're going to actually inject some windborne debris and break the glass so that the pressure builds up inside the building and that's usually when we start seeing structural damage to the building is once the pressure gets inside and it's pushing out on the walls and up on the roof. During the event we also had the chance to walk through the testing facility where the commercial storefront structures were housed in a guided tour provided by Ann Cope. It's exciting to get these really interesting images of why buildings are stronger and how you can make them stronger. Because um, without that image, if I just gave you a, a piece of paper with a bunch of stuff written down, it just doesn't strike you, it doesn't sink home. So we've got the two masonry buildings. The one on the left is built to common, uh, common practice. So the, the typical way that your strip mall building would be built in the middle of the country, just common practice. And then the more resilient building is the blue one that's on the right. Exact same footprint, but attention to some of the details to make it stronger. Among the differences between the two demo structures were the roll-up doors in the back of the commercial buildings. So this one on the common practice building is a standard non-wind rated roll-up door. And the gray one on the resilient building is a wind rated door. So it has uh, devices in it to, to try to keep it inside its frame. Now for a word from our sponsors. When we come back, you'll be able to see the test in action and the effect it had on the structures. Join us for Glass Expo Northeast 2013. Industry leaders from the architectural glass industry will come together in Long Island March 7th and 8th in Hop Hog, New York. Participate in two days of educational seminars covering aspects of the architectural glass industry as well as successful business practices. If you are a member of our co-sponsoring association, the Long Island Glass Association, or a subscriber to U.S. Glass or Architect's Guide to Glass magazines, this educational opportunity is free to you if you pre-register before February 15th. Visit usglassmag.com forward slash G-E-N-E -E to learn more and to free register. Sign up early. And if you're a supplier who wishes to exhibit, call right away before the last booth is gone. Welcome back. Get ready to be blown away as Vice President Ann Cope takes us through the lab demos that pit two versions of commercial storefronts against hurricane-grade winds. Both of these buildings survived at first. They made it through the first onslaught of the winds, up to a gust of 135 miles an hour. That's pretty good. But once that window was broken and that building was breached, that was it. That was the death toll for the common practice building. As soon as that wind got in, it was over. And that building is not inhabitable anymore. Uh, I spoke with a couple of you this morning and said, you know, the buildings are the backbone of our community. If we have places where we can safely work, eat, stay at home, go to school, if we have these buildings where we can safely do our business and live our lives, then our communities will be better off. If the buildings are like the yellow one behind us, and this is what's going to happen after a high wind event, how are we going to keep that community strong? Following the demo, IBHS President Julie Rockman stressed the importance of these tests and the safety features to be included in building structures during a press conference. 
first of all, we just want to say that this test was a success in that there was failure. Because what we're trying to do is really spotlight a vast and stark difference between doing things the right way and doing things the regular way. The yellow building that failed behind us is the same type of construction techniques that are used in virtually every part of this country. So you see again for less than 5% of the total cost of construction, a truly remarkable difference in resilience. It's really important that people understand that buildings operate and are sustained as a system. Before we leave, we want to congratulate the man behind the camera, our video producer, Chris Bunn, for being named a finalist in the prestigious ASBPE Awards for his work on the video newscast of our sister publication, Window Film Magazine. Congratulations to Chris and Window Film editor, Katie O'Mara. Thanks so much for joining us today for the July edition of the USGNN Newscast. Thanks for watching.